the wards are helping a lot. Yeah, you have an actual heal. Alright, um... Devour. Souser. They got a lot of got a lot of attacks. Oof. Yeah, all right. Let's throw this up there. She needs to defend. Souser. Souser is going to defend. Actually, Souser is going to pass a healing there. Palamesho is going to flood them down. Nice. The more things change, the more they stay the same. There we are. Nice, we healed. All right. Um. There we go. And what are you? Let's give him more will. Give him more skill. Increase all element resist for all party members for three turns. That's cool. I like that. All party members, that's worth it. Very worth it. Okay. The gargoyles crumbled into lifeless rubble. Lauren swiped, swiped her blade masterfully at the final hound in her way. Why don't you die? The hound was still standing its ground against all odds. I know those eyes. That beast is fighting for someone beside its, besides itself. Karen had to close her eyes suddenly to keep from seeing Lauren's blade make its final strike. It's dead now. Some looked down on the ground as if they regretted that it had to die after fighting so valiantly. Others, such as Lauren, thought nothing of it. But in the silence, they all heard the whimpering of a hound. They froze and turned back around. The, an inferno hound that they had all thought long dead whimpered louder and stood up. It clawed its way over to the resisting hound that Lauren had just skewered. It was almost impossible not to be moved by how the beast sniffed and whimpered over the dead hound's body, as if it was capable of feelings like them. The mourning hound then howled slowly up into the loudly up into the sky, the voices of each of its heads creating a piercing symphony. And that's gonna be the end boss in the next game. That poor thing. Did we kill it, sweetie? No, it's, it's just, it is a juvenile. We killed its mom, probably. His parent. Karen stepped towards the hound, but Lauren stopped her. Mother, would you rather give it the quick death it deserves? Kill it? After we've come in here and killed its mommy? Our apology is to kill it? Lauren was tight-lipped as Draco stormed past Karen. Draco. The hound stopped howling and jumped back, growling at Draco. Dummy, come back here! I can snipe it from here, no worries. Good doggy, I won't hurt you. Let's not be crazy, Draco. Draco pulled out meat from inside of his robe. Why were you... Okay. Meat from his eye inside of his robes and tossed it at the growling hound. It stopped and sniffed it suspiciously. And then it licked it once. Twice. See? No harm done. I'm a nice one. Because he wasn't even in that... He wasn't in that fight. You can't... He wasn't in the fight. He wasn't part of us. He, we weren't the ones. He wasn't the one who killed your mom. The Inferno Hound ripped at the meat with all three of its heads, sharing it equally amongst the mouths. When it was done, it, it pounced Draco. Everyone gasped. Saren ran up with his blade drawn, with Laura not far from behind. They quickly realized that the Hound was not attacking Draco, however, only sniffing him for more food. Whoa! Not there. That tickles. What are you doing? 
I think I have a new pet. An Inferno Hound? A pet? Why not? Ooh, do we get a new do, do we get a new party member? An Inferno Hound? Because they'll eat you in your sleep. They are the demon's allies. The hound didn't attack or growl at anyone. Its three sets of eyes were stuck on Draco. Nah, he's fine. I cannot find it in me to kill this hound's child. We should let it live. Fine, but we're not keeping it. Why not? It is no one's pet. Entertaining an Inferno Hound is only asking for trouble. You're my little trouble, aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> I like that name. Lauren crinkled her nose. It's too late, we named it already. We're keeping it. Saren, you tell him to get rid of it. No, I'm not telling him to get rid of it. Keep the hound. <gasps> trouble! Oh my gosh, we do have another kid. Oh my gosh, we do have one. Hellhounds are generally hostile, wild creatures, even if Tails says of some barbarian that managed to domesticate them using them as watchdogs or as valuable companions during battle. Heck yeah! Oh my good- oh my goodness, look at all of that. Oh my goodness. Um... Goodness. Uh, reset. Hold on, reset that. Let me see what he's got. Fire Breath. Hit single target with fire damage for 200% of caster's base attack and has a 40% chance of causing burn condition for three turns. Poison Fangs. Hits two enemies, double attack, single target with 70% accuracy and 110% damage. And has a 30% chance of poisoning him for three turns. Armor Skin. Target skin becomes tough as an armor, giving a defense 25% bonus for five turns. Match Menacing Growl. Pushes the target front row to the back row. If there is someone behind them, they swap positions. And has a 40% chance to cause a scared condition. Killer Instinct. The Hellhound Killer Instinct increases his attack and speed by 10%, lasts for 3 returns. Um... Single. 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 So that's single, front, range, all. Um... Menacing Growl, Killer Instinct, I mean, he's a Hellhound, so Fire Breath, I mean, why not? Fire Breath is pretty awesome. This one he needs to be shaken to use Fangs. The conditional ones are a little, you know, they're not super useful all the time because you have to wait for the right time for them to be shaken to use them. Um, armor skin. Let's use Menacing Growl. Because I like positioning is might be very useful. And then attack and speed. Tough as armor. Let's do Killer Instinct. Alright, so. Um. Yeah, uh. Active. Let's do that. Trouble. 13. Nice! Alright. You're gonna be in trouble now. No, I like it. It's cute with its three waggly tongues. What? Wonderful. Another creature saved from the darkness. <gasps> Achievement unlocked. Animalist. Adopt trouble. Mirth approached the dog and pet its middle head. Its tail began to wag, and the other heads pushed the, pushed the middle out of the way, fighting for Mirth's attention. We don't need dead weight. If that mutt's recognized Draco as its new owner, you won't have to worry about that. It'll fight alongside us. We are its new pack. I'll kill it if it gets out of line. The same as you, Draco. <laughs> At least she treats them both as equally. Draco waited for Lord to leave to bend down to whisper to the hound. Don't worry, Trouble. She's all bark. Draco led the hound inside the castle walls and obediently followed. Oh boy. 
Trouble became a loyal servant for Lauren and her friends. It needed a pact to survive, and Draco was willing to adopt it, despite the fact that we killed its mom. Though it was a wild beast that needed domest domestication in many aspects, its untamed spirit turned it into a formidable, into a f to, into an formidable ally on the battlefield. After all these years, they really didn't fix any of these grammatical errors. It's just hilarious. They approached the entrance of the castle and saw that it was covered in cobwebs and more dusty gargoyles. The tall windows, however, were lit as if the castle was lived in. Lauren took out her sword and moved towards the giant doors. Do not storm the front. They will be expecting that. We are stronger, and it is the easiest way. Yes, why not? There isn't a fight too difficult for me. Have you ever even met a vampire? Let's not be foolhardy. They have dark magic on their side. Saren, what do you think? I like to... I'm not a warrior, so I'm going to say find another way. Vampires are too strong and too clever for us to play by their own game. We need to play by our rules. Then we find another way inside. Why do you... What do you figure? I remember. My mother spoke of a secret passageway. Perhaps there is one in the perimeter? I'll be scouting. I'll begin scouting. They all carefully approached the castle and inspected the exterior for hidden doors. They found the cellar door. With a quick bash of Ramis' axe, the lock was history. The cellar door opened with a dusty creak. I do not know where this will this leads or what will be down here. Everyone should remain vigilant. They walked down into the darkness in a single file. The group found themselves in more of a cave than a room. This must be a passageway to the catacombs under Namar. Can we get to the castle from here? Well, we can get to the citadel from here. We can get to Apollomesho's daughter's cavern from here. We can get to the lizardmen's area from here. I am certain of it. I suspect the cave from a labyrinth of twists and turns that will be infected with the undead. We should consider splitting up into two parties to double our chance of finding a way into the castle. I will attempt to use my divination to show us the path, so I will lead one group. And I will use my own powers to lead the second group. Very well, I will lead one of the two teams while Saren will lead the other. Saren, decide who will join you. I trust your decision. You can now select who will be in your group between Mirth and Apalamesho. The other one won't be available for the whole exploration, so choose wisely. Who will be in your group between Mirth and Apalamesho? The other one won't be available for the whole exploration. Uh, I like Apalamesho. Apalamesho is really good. Now select six party members that will be part of your group. Review your setup before proceeding. So, uh, I want trouble. Hey na, hey na. Um, yeah. Saren and Apalamesho. Do I want anyone else? This is a pretty awesome group. Yeah, I mean, not gonna lie. This is pretty awesome. Uh, sure. Chambara and Apalamesho and Saren and Trouble and Souser and yeah, this is, this is a powerhouse group. The group split and took opposing tunnels to find a hidden passage into the castle. They walked deep into the catacombs. They came to a fork in the tunnel. Skulls were strewn around in the, the left tunnel's entrance. I'm left-handed. Saren took the first steps into the, into the left tunnel. The bones crunched under his feet, making him very uneasy. The vicious creature who created those bones could have been lurking anywhere in the darkness in front of him. But he had walked far enough without incident that he called back to the party, telling them it was clear. I made the right choice. The rest of the party followed after him, and they proceeded down the passageway. Hold! I sense there is something nearby. Monsters? Whatever it may be, we need to reveal it. It is well hidden at the moment. Dig walls. Dig ground. Dig ceiling? Dig the walls? The party claws and digs at the walls of the tunnel. Piling dirt by their feet, the wall gets thinner and thinner. And it just collapses. A cavity is on the other side. We found another passage. Excellent. Just what we needed. Hurry along now. Wow, am I just choosing all the right things? They slip into the new passageway and continue their search. An intersection of tunnels halted them. The passage on the left looked darker than the others, and the passage on the right looked like it would lead right back the way they came. The center passage was unremarkable. Whoa, hold on. Don't go straight. There's definitely some baddies up ahead. How do you know? Irijo told me. All right, that leaves the right, left to right. Nice, I like that Souser is with us. Um, should we stick to the light? The dark usually does not hold anything in our favor. Yeah, 
Go to the light. Go straight. Left was darker. Right had the light, I think. I think right had the light. They made a sharp turn and walked into a passageway with stone walls. This is more along the lines of what you could, would see near a castle escape route. We must be getting closer. Then let's hurry. Their combined skills brought them success. Nice! I brought, the, I brought my dream team. They had successfully navigated the Namar catacombs and wound up at what could only be a direct entrance into the castle. A ladder. It would lead us straight into the interior of the castle. We don't know what to expect once, once, when we're, once, we, once when we are inside. Our job's not done yet. It could get really hairy in there. I will contact Mirth now and show her the path here. Sarah nodded and stepped up the ladder, but suddenly something caused it, caught his attention. They traveled with aid of their magic to light their way. The tunnel expanded and poured out into an eerie room. Bones and the remnants of dark rituals were scattered around. This evil place... We should have been very near at an entrance into the castle. Oh, very far. Everyone jumped from hearing the eerie voice. They saw no one. Come out, whoever you are. A raven swooped down from the ceiling and landed on a rotting table in front of them. Lauren watched the bird with much caution. Another shapeshifter? A raven, how cliche. Are you friend or foe? The raven only sat on the table, look, looking around the room with no discretion. Lauren slowly approached it with her hands on her sword. Kill it while it's in a weak form. I ask that you do not. The same voice from before was now behind them. They turned to see a very old woman leaning against the staff as if it was the only thing keeping her standing. He is my dearest companion. Who are you? Do you have our Amazon sisters? The old woman smiled, revealing she had no teeth. Mother Morte, I am friend, not foe. Those that can speak sometimes call me Mother Morty. I have no Amazons in my collection. They are not with me. They looked around the room and realized that she had, she considered the piles of bones to be hers. So you're one of those types of reclusive old ladies. The creepy kind? Necromancer. Creepy is an understatement. The old woman laughed a dry laugh as if dust would billow from her. I am proud of my work. Listen to me long enough and you will see its beauty too. Why should we give an ear to someone who plays with dark magic? We should strike you down. Shambara crossed her arms and rolled her eyes. Dark. I've heard of the term before. Dark. Yes. They call this dark magic. She has gone senile. Can we kill her now? Your respect for your elders is staggering. She's a bone witch. She's not worth any respect. You may regret slaying me. I project you'll regret it very much. Everyone looked at each other. Lauren stepped forward. Do you know where my people are? Can you get us there? I do. I can. But I speak of something much greater. You are losing grip upon your world above. The kings of other realms have come to claim it. It will be theirs if you let them. Kings of other realms? Do you speak of the Death Knights? Mother Morte smiled and wheezed. What names this company tells me? It is almost as amusing as my own name. Yes, your Death Knights. There is more than you know. More? There are more Death Knights in Aravorn? No. They gasped and went silent. One death knight was enough to bring their entire world to ruin, but another? How could we have not known? You are mistaken. He is a child king. He is fresh and new. But do not underestimate him. He will take as easily as the king in Everburn. You are a monk from the mountain, yes? Tisk tisk. She wagged her finger at Souser. You let this happen. I... What? You beings are your own worst enemy. You think the creatures of the dark are your culprits for all world problems? No, no. Cultists. No. Hear this woman. I cannot believe this. Cultists have undone hundreds of years to work to keep the Death Knight sealed away. They've invited their own destruction. You are starting to see the world from the eyes below. You can see why I trust to bones and not flesh. 
flesh is the true evil. Quiet, necromancer. Lauren was demanding, but a small shake in her sword arm revealed that the idea of another death knight in the world scared her. What else do you know of this death knight? I can send the king home. He'll go on his way and disappear. The world would be none the wiser. But how? We're building a huge army just for one of them. You will not need an army for this king. He struggles to find allies in the wastes, and he will find little. The other king has already reaped that field. You need my knowledge of his home to send him there. I can bend death to your advantage. How can we trust you? Who do you gain from all? What do you gain from all this? Yeah, aren't you all you undead folk buddies? We're kindred, but the kings must always be feared. They're blind and will attack all. But it is good for me that some still can tell friend from foe. Mother Morte smiled at Lauren. We need each other to defeat him, I think. You will not be able to defeat him on your own. What are your terms? Terms. Terms! The death of the king. What other terms are there? What's the catch? You are very peculiar people. You must want something. Tell us now. Very well, my dear raven. This company is so taxing. When you have killed the king, he will give you a gift. I will require it. What kind of gift? What if he doesn't give us one? He will bestow something very powerful unto you, I promise, if you follow my specific instructions. In return for the gift, I will give you command of my companions to take down the king in Everburn, along with the safety of your world. So, now that you have your frivolous terms, do you accept them? I think a lot of this game is never to judge a book by its cover. A lot of this game is about prejudice and having preconceived notions about people. So I'm going to I'm going to trust this woman. I've always wanted a necromancer friend. Sign me up. The living may not be such bad company after all. New quest, Undead Pact. Find and kill the death knight that is hiding in the orcish wastes for Mother Morte. Now that you are friend, the undead won't attack us anymore, right? All the ones under my command. Very well. I will tell them not to bother you. And the others? I'm not responsible for every walking corpse in the realm, unfortunately. You must still fend for yourselves in the wilderness. Though you must have more than enough travelers with you, you should let a zombie win a fight or two. They're usually quite hungry, and it's only polite. No, thank you. We've accepted. Now tell us everything you know. Your death knight is hiding in the land of the orcs. His summoners seek to please him, but they won't. Go to the city of the orcs. They will take you to him. When you are near the, to the king, call upon me and I will guide you. Act quickly and move to kill. He'll know in your eyes what you plan to do. You have a master of truth with you. He will be perfect in sending this king home. Will I now? You are friends with many on the other side. You know that realm intimately. Oh, I'm really glad that there's a Souser, there's a Souser um, quest here. Let's say that I do. What are you getting at? You know what the king is and what must be done. I'm not volunteering. You will find you won't have a choice, but do not fear. You will be pleased, very pleased. I will give the king's gift to you. Souser unfolded his arms and stared blankly at the old woman. Very pleased you will be. And if we don't call upon you, what if we decide to kill the Death Knight on our own? I would enjoy watching you try. I'm sure it would be very amusing indeed. Mother Morte cackled. We're done here. Show us a way into the castle. The necromancer weighed Lauren's threat, decided it was worth submitting to. My legs are not what they used to be, but if I must... Mother Morte showed the group the entrance into the castle. The way was covered in cobwebs. You'll find my fallen friends above. They are not very kind to trespassers, but I'm sure that's no concern of yours. Lauren said nothing and pushed past the old woman. Karen was close behind. Their Amazon sisters could not wait any longer. 
Saren stepped into the dusty castle interior. Everything looked as if it hadn't been touched in ages, but the house clearly looked lived in from the inside, from the outside. Quiet your voices. They walked through the rooms as silently as they could, scanning for any sign of the captured Amazons. After searching everywhere, they were left with a high tower. Entering the tower, they could only ascend the staircase. They climbed up and up. Oh, and it's this again. At the top, they ran into a furnished room. You are a persistent bunch. Who? From a chair rose a dapper man. From this pale skin, they could easily recognize him as a vampire. I'm Zachary Mumar, lord of this castle. You've really come a long way, but you are still utterly uninvited. I would ask you to leave, but as it is, you won't be leaving. I'm truly sorry. You have our sisters captive. We've come to free them and to send you back to your grave. Amazons. Crude bunch you are. You die. Lauren took out her swords, but the vampire just shook his finger at her. Kill me, and you will never find your friends. Release them, now. Hmm. No. Lauren jerked forward, but Saren rushed up instead. Why not? Why did you capture them in the first place? Because they disturbed our solitude. Oh, our. Their invasive snooping was most rude. So they'll be punished. You haven't killed them yet, so you must have something in mind for them. Well done. Yes, you are most clever. Zachary began to pace. As much as I enjoy my solitude here, I am unfortunately bound to this castle as well. I cannot leave it, nor can my wife, Valerie. But you see, it is our 300th anniversary soon, and my simple gifts will not do. You are trying my patience. What is the rush? Our sisters, where are they? They are safe, but hidden. What did you plan on using them for? As gifts for my dearest love. Amazons are not gifts. If you want your friends back, then you must get me something better. Something that Valerie will cherish for the millennia to come. That sounds like, an, like a deal we'd be interested in accepting. So long as we're not trading lives for more lives. No, no, I will let you mortals have your sacredness of life, if you so want it. I will ask for something material in return. Spit it out, vampire. I believe... Yes. Yeah. I believe my love will appreciate a beautiful gem. A diamond, unlike any other. A precious stone? The best are found in dwarven mines. Yes, I want the highest quality diamond you can muster from the Hammerhand's mines. No one just gets to walk into a dwarven mine and pick out their best rock. You're asking a big deal. It's your choice if the lives of your friends aren't a big deal enough as well. We cannot find our sisters. We must do as he says. He's our only hope for their release. Why can't we just kill him? Lauren looked to Saren for advice. Ah, uh, but I like questing. Mistress, if you truly wish for the prisoner's safety, then you should do as he asks. Lauren frowned deeply and put away her swords. I hate vampires, and I hate you, but I will get you your diamond. Stupendous. I will try to ask my house guests to not feast on you when you return, but they're a bit rebellious by nature. We'll see how you fare. Farewell, etc, etc. New quest, a gift for Valerie. Retrieve the biggest diamond from the Dwarven Mines and return to the Mar Castle. They trekked out of the castle far more easily than they had entered. Their hearts were low, but they were also tired. If they had confronted the vampires directly, they would have had more battles on their hands. We'll have to try to convince the miners and hammerhands to part with one of their gems. It won't be easy, I can tell you that right now. Good, because easy stuff is boring. I really miss boring. Interesting. Interesting. We didn't really fight all that much. Mesfit looked away. I don't know if any of this... Any of these guys have anything new to say. I saw a box marked with your name at the Magic Academy. Did you attend there once? Unfortunately. Really? Why did you never mention that? Because then I'd lose all of my mysterious mystery. Why did you leave for the swamp if you lived in Horus before? Because I broke the rules and studied dark magic, of course. That's apparently really bad. 